Welcome to the COVID-19 Contact Crunch. More questions, fewer agents. I'm Matt Wujak, CCW Digital Writer and Analyst, and your host for today's session, in which Justin Sears, LucidWorks' VP of Product Marketing, and I will be covering trends and technologies in friendly AI-powered search and conversational interfaces for customer self-service. It's, thanks, Matt. I'm excited to be presenting with you today. Let's start by discussing the top three impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic that we at LucidWorks are helping our clients overcome. The first is a transition to more remote, remote work. Secondly, a sudden surge in e-commerce as shoppers avoid stores. And the burden, third, the burden on contact centers for customer and employee support. Because of COVID-19, we are working differently than we did in 2019. An excerpt from this Forbes article sums up really well. What started as a few weeks of working from home has evolved into a catalyst for change regarding how we work and live. You know, uh, Matt, before the outbreak, some of us worked for companies with work from home policies, but that was the exception to the norm. And very quickly, millions of workers have had to figure out how to transition to working from home with all the cultural, logistic, and equipment related disruption that comes with that. And companies, had to give their employees the support and resources to make that transition. Many of them were unprepared. So now work from home is the new normal for millions of employees. Uh, employees working from home for the first time usually go through an uncomfortable transition period. Zoom meetings replace conference rooms and whiteboards. Colleagues that used to be a quick stroll down the aisle now have to be online and available not to mention expense reimbursement for home Wi-Fi or purchase of additional office supplies. Employees have questions as they navigate this new terrain and support employees in HR, or IT, or finance have been swamped by a flood of questions that they've never had to answer before. Some of those questions are complex and require a human answer, but many of the support questions are FAQs that can be answered far more efficiently by a digital assistant or chatbot. But people ask the same question in many different ways, in their own words. So those automated systems need a human-like intelligence with the stamina and efficiency of a robot. When automated systems can give answers personalized to the context of each employee, it offloads many of those support tickets and frees help desk agents to tackle the more challenging and interesting issues that really need an agent. So Matt, I believe you have some survey findings on this issue. Tell us what you found. Yeah, absolutely, Justin. So thank you for that. Um, according to CCW Digital Research, approximately 73% of customer experience leaders are actually looking to make remote work a more permanent option right now. And 90% are more committed to improving self-service after the COVID-19 outbreak. On the other hand, um, only 2% of respondents said they are less committed to AI and digital engagement in favor of obviously ongoing focus on traditional phone support for that 2%. So data shows very much so strongly that consumer engagement with messaging apps and SMS, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, Apple iMessage, and other messaging platforms are actually expected to increase by four minutes in 2020, up to 24 minutes per day, contributing to more digital engagement, more online and social media engagement, and obviously the e-commerce boom that many are experiencing that we'll be covering a little bit later. Recently, I was talking to um, a Forbes contributor and influencer of customer experience and social media. His name is Dan Gingis, and um, he has had experience leading social media and customer experience teams at McDonald's, Discover, and Humana. And what he told me in the podcast series, and as well as an article that I wrote quoting some of his stuff, he said, the second Titanic shift that I would say happened in the last year or so is that now there's this move to messaging and that is part social because obviously we have Facebook Messenger, and we have Twitter DMs, but it also includes other chat categories like SMS. So there's really this blend between um, social media and uh, messaging apps and text message where consumers are spending more time online, more people are getting furloughed or laid off by the week. People are spending more time and have more time to spend online and engage with different companies. And that's ultimately contributing to an e-commerce boom as people are scrolling around. And as we'll touch on a little bit later, obviously with more e-commerce sales comes more customer inquiries, which many are finding it difficult to accommodate. 
that data is really interesting, Matt, and it definitely uh, reflects what our clients who use our digital workplace solution are telling us about the challenge they face supporting remote workers. But uh, COVID has also had a big impact on how we shop, and you just alluded to this. Here's another article from Forbes titled, How COVID-19 is Transforming E-Commerce. And this article includes this prediction, COVID-19 will forever change retailing and its initial impact on e-commerce is creating challenges to online selling and service no one imagined in January. We, are, uh, we work with a lot of e-commerce customers that use uh, Fusion, our product for online search and uh, catalog search and product research. Here are some of the structural hurdles uh, accelerated by COVID clients using our digital commerce solution are overcoming with our platform. Uh, well, first and foremost, more stores are closed or operating at reduced com capacity, which means that online consumers are shifting a larger share of their purchases to the web. And others who did little or no online shopping, and there are some of those folks out there, uh, began to do so out of necessity. For both new and experienced shoppers, question answering at point of sale improves click-through rates, easier product discovery improves add to cart rates, and better shopping experiences, more friendly shopping experiences, increase average order values and return visits. These factors caused U.S. retailers online year-over-year mid-April. And there was 129% year-over-year growth in U.S. and Canadian e-commerce orders as of April 21st, and 146% growth in all online retail orders. Uh, these are big numbers, Matt. Give us a, more detail on your research findings on COVID's impact to e-commerce. Absolutely, so obviously digital commerce channels have gotten a lot more business during the pandemic, along with some challenges caused by the sudden and unforeseen changes that we're all experiencing at this point in time. Of course, more online sales mean more customer inquiries, as we've been alluding to. Customer contact volume has increased tenfold during the pandemic, as seen in a previous CCW Digital webinar. But at the same time, interestingly, agent capacity declined by 20%. And as you might imagine, this contributed to a 28% decline in customer satisfaction with buying online. As more people are calling brands or messaging brands or navigating different websites and uh, communicating with different e-commerce businesses, there's more inquiries going on and people have to handle these inquiries. At the same time, there's less agents to do that. So ultimately, this is alluding to lower customer satisfaction ratings across previous customer-centric businesses who are struggling to accommodate these inquiries and handle these online sales. In fact, I recently wrote an article titled, How Commerce is Shifting Towards Uber-Style Service. Uh, I encourage everyone to check it out if you haven't already. And in that piece, I interviewed a number of influencers, including Colin Crowley, the VP of Customer Experience at Freshly, which is a service that delivers prepared meals to consumers, usually in bulk. Colin told me, quote, we have escalated pre-existing strategies and implemented them faster. We are already looking at a world where we wanted to invest, invest a good deal in AI solutions and chatbot technology. We knew coming in 2020, this was going to be the year of the chatbot where we really wanted to embrace chatbot technology to allow customers to get answers to their questions as soon as possible in a very, very basic use case and be able to repurpose our agents to more complicated and evolved tasks and also more specialized areas so they could typically help customers through difficult circumstances. So that's something we doubled down on with COVID, end quote. That's, that definitely echoes some of the conversations we've had with our customers. And so the, the third big impact that I, I wanted to highlight and discuss with you, Matt, was um, something I probably don't need to tell this audience about, and, and that's a, that contact centers have taken a huge hit. This article in the Wall Street Journal sums it up really well. For contact centers, it started with a recipe for chaos. Many were forced to close their physical workplaces at the same time that call volumes skyrocketed. And as a result, contact centers have had to do far more with far less. Those who had invested in more human self-service options have been in a position to deflect more calls without harming customer loyalty. 
as contact center agents pick up the more complex, interesting tickets, their learning improves and they become more effective and engaged. And so this is really separating the wheat from the chaff. The questions that people ask that are really easy to answer, those can be handled by a bot or virtual assistant. And the really interesting ones get through to the agents that can then use their human intellect to engage with the customer. And so better question answering technology like chatbots frees those contact teams to focus on the harder problems uh, and allows them to provide more vi business value. Absolutely, Justin. And there are certainly very uh, a plethora of viable self-service options out there for many, be they chatbots or virtual assistants. But our research shows that approximately 70% are actually struggling to implement solutions with AI and automation. So I guess my question for you, Justin, is why, why do you think that is the case or what, what do you foresee coming in the near future? Well, Matt, things have moved very, very quickly in this space. And so we need to remember, first of all, that only a couple of decades ago, artificial intelligence was sci-fi. Now the technology exists, but most companies still try to build their own solutions from scratch. And at LucidWorks, we refer to this as a project-based approach. It's risky because it requires that data scientists understand the business needs and then create models that the IT team can implement. The technology can work, but most AI projects fail because of mistakes with human cooperation across those teams. That's why we encourage our clients to follow a product-based approach to adopting AI rather than a project-based approach. You know, if you invest in a software platform, Form that has AI inside and an open framework that integrates easily with existing systems to solve the common use cases like chatbots or uh, for customer support, for example, you get AI and automation that already works for the problem you have. Then the data scientists, the business, and the IT teams can collaborate on extending that platform to tackle adjacent use cases. And, you know, first generation chatbots were designed with rules based logic. Their creators wrote out all the questions they expected to get and programmed the bots with answers to those questions. Basically, an FAQ with conversational window dressing. But this earlier approach had limitations. It, it provided a poor user experience because users had to form the question exactly uh, as the system anticipated it. If the important questions and answers changed over time, the systems had to be manually updated. If users asked questions outside of the specified domain, even if they had something to do with the programmed question, the bots couldn't provide close enough answers. And you know, the interactions were rigid and they lacked the soft touch of humans with contextual awareness that these things were designed to implement or, or, or replace. And so they were hard to integrate within existing contact and support ecosystems and processes. Here's a great example from this screenshot. Uh, it's an uh, odd example of a chatbot that can tell you the temperature at a particular location, but did not understand the concept of weekend. And then it makes the excuse that it fell asleep. So if you have a chatbot that falls asleep, you really need a new chatbot. So uh, quickly, a little bit more about our product. Because LucidWorks Fusion, my company's main platform, was designed with machine learning and natural language processing to personalize search, we're very familiar with the challenge of predicting a user's intent based on the millions of ways they might describe what they're looking for. Our Smart Answers application, which runs on Fusion, takes all of that knowledge and software and provides it as a middle layer that gives existing chatbots and virtual assistants the power of deep learning. So they can train themselves on any questions the users might ask and then get better at answering questions automatically. So what this means is it gives users immediate contextual answers to natural language questions, improved call deflection through intelligent self-service, better agent effectiveness and employee self-service, and it can replace existing knowledge base and FAQ systems that are so difficult to keep up to date. So uh, in a couple of minutes, I'd like to show you a brief pre-recorded Smart Answers demo that highlights the range and flexibility of Smart Answers. And I think uh, our audience will understand how this might be applicable to some of the challenges they face with COVID-19. So let me run that video right now and then we'll get back to wrap it up. 
future prospective customer might ask, which feature releases do you support? Feature releases formerly service packs are available in a 90 day cycle. We fully support customers on the five most recent feature releases. Or perhaps instead of a future customer, maybe I'm an investor. I may ask a question along the lines of, does Datapack pay dividends? No, Datapack currently does not issue cash dividends. Now those two questions I asked were pretty simple. Let's make them a little bit more complex and remove some of the keywords out of them. Is there an annual return if I invest in Datapack? No, Datapack currently does not issue cash dividends. So here's a great example really showcasing the power of smart answers. I didn't use any of the keywords. I used, I replaced them really with annual, return, invest, and smart answers understood the context and that there is a semantic closeness between my question and the answer that we have indexed. So to have a Q&A system that feels natural and has a high rate of accuracy, you really do need a lot of intelligence all working together behind the scenes. And with smart answers, we take a layered approach to achieving this. For example, we can incorporate things like entity recognition, parts of speech tagging to identify nouns and verbs within a query. And when we take all that additional information into account, we can create these really simple yet highly effective enhancements that make a conversation feel much more natural. To illustrate this, I'm gonna move over to another web application. And I'll start typing some questions in the search box. What's a data cell group? And what's different here is instead of receiving a frequently asked question, I can return a glossary definition that's coming from an entirely different data source. But because we can understand the type of question that was asked, we could boost the most appropriate answer, even if it lives in a different data, a different data source. So let's change that into something different. Who can read data in a data cell location? And Smart Answers identify that this wasn't more, this wasn't related to a glossary definition necessarily. It was more closely semantically similar to a frequently asked question. So let's tie all of these concepts together and I'll show you what uh, a really fluid conversational experience might look like for a particular line of questioning. And for this, we'll go back to our chatbot. What's a client computer group? A logical grouping of client computers in which selected options can apply to all member clients. Why would I ever need to use a client computer group? Once created, client computer groups can be used to perform the following tasks for all their members, create scheduled tasks, set user security, view job history, generate reports. And who can tell me more about that? Aliyah Abed will likely know. She specializes in networking, client computer groups, and virtual machines. So what's interesting is that I asked three different questions. The first one was related to a glossary term, the second one an FAQ, but let's look at this third one. And I'm gonna put it in the search box in this case. So in addition to those first two data sources, we could also index data from Active Directory and then apply that line of questioning to a different data source, in this case, one we have called people, and then boost this one up as the first most relevant answer. Matt, I'm switching back to internal speaker. Can you hear me okay? Yep, I can hear you fine. All right, so uh, I think over to you now. Yeah, absolutely. So Justin, you've highlighted a number of different challenges during the pandemic and the need for smart answers specifically. For the more technically minded members of the audience, talk to us a little bit about smart answers, machine learning capabilities and why they will stand out. Definitely, uh, you know, if our listeners remember one thing from this conversation, I want it to be this, you can start using smart answers for effective self-service no matter how much existing content you have. 
look, most organizations have lots of knowledge base and FAQ content. Some even have existing question answer pairs. All that is great content to jumpstart smart answers so you get immediate value the moment you integrate it with your existing customer uh, self-service applications. But you can also take smart answers off the shelf and launch it even if you don't have a single word of existing content. After all, how many of our companies had existing content on our approach to COVID-19 in 2019? Nobody. Smart answers ships with pre-built machine learning models that have already been trained on public sources like Wikipedia. Our new clients can launch them and from the first minute they begin learning how to answer the precise company specific questions that your customers ask you. Smart Answers takes advantage of Fusion's operational pipelines for indexing and queries to help you scale your question answering systems. And APIs make it easy to integrate Smart Answers with your existing chatbot frameworks uh, that you might have in place. Finally, um, for the folks out there that aren't data scientists, a low code UI makes it easy for all of us not trained in data science to manage our own or your own question answering system. And uh, let me go ahead. Um, so uh, wrapping up, if any of you are looking for smarter self-service options that can improve the intelligence of your existing conversational apps, or if you're looking into chatbots or digital assistants for the first time, we'd love to talk with you about Smart Answers. So you can go to this URL, fill out the contact form, and we'll set up some time to talk. Matt, that's that great. So my comments. Absolutely, Justin. So we'll be in touch. Thank you so much for this presentation. Um, I'm looking forward to connecting in the future. And that wraps up the COVID-19 contact crunch. More questions, fewer answers with LucidWorks's VP of Product Marketing, Justin Sears. Justin, thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Matt. It's been a pleasure.